at the end of the day, kids grow up. Mm. So you sacrifice everything, you lose you. And then the kids turn 18, they're at your house, then what are you left with? Mm. You know, so at the end of the day, you have to pick and choose what those sacrifices look like. So for me, yeah, I make sacrifices, but at the same time, I include my husband and my children along with my business ventures. Mm -hmm. So we make it a family thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I gotta go off for, you know, a couple of days and I don't see my children. Mm -hmm. Now my children are coming with me because they're involved in this business too, because hopefully I want them to pick up you know, and, and I can t hand this baton off to them, they can keep it moving. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's such a misconception that you can't do everything it is that you wanna do because something is gonna lack. Mm. That's not true. It's not, it's, it's all about what you, how you prioritize things, how you schedule things. You might have to wake up a little earlier in the morning mm -hmm. to accomplish the things you need to accomplish for yourself and be present for your husband, your children, and to run your business. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, it's, it's doesn't, sacrificing doesn't mean that something has to fall short mm -hmm. or you can't take care of you. Entrepreneurship looks glamorous. It is what it is. You know, you're working for yourself. You see people traveling. You see them having all these extravagant things and they're like, it's all because I work for myself. Yeah. But no one talks about the grunt work that goes on behind the scenes that people just don't see. Mm -hmm. And they don't talk about the slow seasons that roll around yeah. when money is not coming in the same way. What do you do? Yeah. You can't give up. Mm -hmm. It's never perfection. Mm -hmm. Every single day you have something that rolls out and it's like, how am I gonna overcome this? Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you wanna watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, all right, let's go back to the video. Pay attention and listen, we about to teach class. Inside the boat, my man asked Cash to get your man right. Thursday nights, 8 p.m. to see him change your life. Millionaire mindset, the best on earth. All right, so welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. When I tell you we keep bringing you power after power after power, we have somebody who is so powerful, a wife, a mother, a boss, serial entrepreneur, somebody who could teach you how to get to the bag, but how to change lives while you get into the bag, Miss Halani Lobdell, AKA Mrs. Two Weeks Out. What is up? How you doing? How I'm you feeling? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for being our guest. Um, before we start though, cause, cause I, cause I want to, I, you know, I want to know, uh, I want to talk about balance. I want to talk about how do you do everything that you do and still maintain the balance and still love life and still live. But before we get there, in your words, who is Halani Lobdell? So it took me a minute to really figure out who I am Yes. because I started out on a certain path yeah. and ended up where I am now. Yeah. So I'm a CEO. Mm -hmm. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a boss, mm. literally. Yeah. And I evolved into that. Mm. Literally started, you know, fire department. Yeah. Thought I was gonna do 30 years and retire from that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm on a whole nother path. Mm. You know, just, just paving a way that I didn't think was even possible for mm. me. Mm. And so, you know, I'm a dreamer now. Yes. Didn't do that before. Yeah. And I feel like I'm just setting a bar for other women to understand you can have a family, yeah. you can have a successful marriage, yeah. you can have a successful business mm. or businesses, mm. you can just be all of that, yeah. handle it all. Mm. I love that. And so I, I want to talk about that for a second because I think that um, there is this misconception. That's, this is why you have so much power, right? Because there is this misconception that being a mother comes with having to sacrifice yourself. Being a wife comes with sacrifices. Um, having to run a business, sacrifice. Like, literally, 
um, you know, there are people out there, and I'm not saying it's easy, right? So we're going to talk about, like, I want you to kind of give the real, but there are literally people out there who are like, man, I want to run a business, but I want to leave my job, but I want to be there for my kids, but I want to have a great relationship with my, with my partner, but, um, you know, just knowing you and and seeing everything that's happening, like they, you know, it looks like there's a balance and like you're you're killing it on all levels. So like, um, talk about that, you know, or or, or for those out there or women out there specifically, um, who are um, sacrificing, who are who don't have the abundance mindset, right? So you know, abundance is your birthright, yeah. which means and is better than or. So talk to that person, like, what was that journey like? Get into that space of balance, being able to enjoy abundance and having it all. Yeah. So you know, you, you said a lot, and the mis I hate the misconception that we have to make sacrifices and can't do what we need to do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So everything comes with sacrifices, mm -hmm. you know, being a wife, being a mother, being a business owner. But at the end of the day, kids grow up. Mm -hmm. So you sacrifice everything, you lose you, mm -hmm. and then the kids turn 18, they're at your house, then what are you left with? Mm -hmm. You know, so at the end of the day, you have to pick and choose what those sacrifices look like. So mm -hmm. for me, yeah, I make sacrifices, but at the same time, I include my husband and my children along with my business ventures. Mm -hmm. So we make it a family thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I gotta go off for, you know, a couple of days and I don't see my children. Mm -hmm. Now my children are coming with me because mm -hmm. they're involved in this business too because mm -hmm. hopefully I want them to pick up, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I can t hand this baton off to them and they can keep it moving. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's such a misconception that you can't do everything it is that you want to do because something is going to lack. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's it's all about what you how you prioritize things, how you schedule things. You might have to wake up a little earlier in the morning mm -hmm. to accomplish the things you need to accomplish for yourself and be present for your husband, your children, and to run your business. Mm -hmm. But it's it, it's it's doesn't sacrificing doesn't mean that something has to fall short mm -hmm. or you can't take care of you. Mm -hmm. You know, every Wednesday that's my day. Mm -hmm. Kids are off at school. Mm -hmm. It's Halani's time. Yes. I'm gonna go get my hair done. I'm gonna yeah. get my. I'm gonna get a massage. I'm gonna right. go to the chiropractor. Yeah. Everything for me. Yeah. Because if you leave a void for yourself, you have nothing left to give to anybody else. Mm. So you know, it, it, you definitely have to figure out how to balance it all. Mm -hmm. It can be a lot, mm -hmm. but it's possible. Yeah. It's definitely possible. And with the with the dynamite support system, mm -hmm. you know, I preach that all the time. Having some sort of support system. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a lot of people. It could be one person mm -hmm. that you can lean on to say, hey. I need some time for me. Yeah. Or hey, you know, I, I need some time away from my husband. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. whatever the situation looks like, but mm -hmm. just one. Yeah. People think you need a whole cluster of people in order to make things work. You mm -hmm. do not. Yeah. What you need is to prioritize, mm -hmm. see exactly where things fall, and carve out the time. Mm -hmm. Wake up earlier might mean you got to go to bed a little bit later. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you can you can hand, have everything that you need to have to be fulfilled personally mm -hmm. and be that person for everyone else too. No, I love that. And you said something that was really important. You said you have to carve out that time for you in order to be able to give to the others, right? And so, um, you know, talk a little bit about that more a little bit, right? Because it's like um, you can't pour from an empty cup. And a lot, and what I'm noticing is a lot of times people are, you know, giving, giving, giving without taking care of themselves. So now they're not even giving their best self. They're giving a, a, a version of themselves that's not their best self and then get frustrated and then give everything up mm -hmm. opposed to making sure they have that self-care in order for them to be able to take care of others. You know, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah so who's charging you up mm. at the end of the day? Yeah. You know, you give, 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 and then you're left totally drained. Mm. So you have to have that time. So for me, it, that's my morning routine. That's why I preach a morning routine is so important. So yeah. I'm going to get up every morning and do the things I need. I'm going to pray. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read. I'm going to, you know, just do the little things for me that are charging Halani up. Mm -hmm. So when the kids come home from school and it's like they need help with homework or they need to be taken to their activities or I have to perform my wifely duties, I have the energy that's necessary to do it because I charge myself up first every single day. Mm -hmm. So it's essential and that's why a morning routine is so important. So I'm going to wake up before they wake up mm -hmm. and I have that hour for me. So that when I have to give, I got everything I need to do so. Mm. It's important. Yeah, I love it, love it. And so talk a little bit about, um, you know, having a nine to five and running a business. Because you did something extraordinary, right? Like you were, you know, you know, had a nine to five and then ran a business 
Like not not a five figure business, not a six figure business. You made seven figures, seven like a whole seven with a job. With a whole job. With a whole job. But wait, we ain't gonna even say my job was nine to five because mm. I worked twenty four hour shifts. Respectfully. Okay. Yeah. I worked between forty eight and fifty three hours a week. Sheesh. So. I'm not going to say it was easy because because it wasn't. And yeah. The nature of my job required me to be a quick thinker. Yeah. It was lives at stake with the type of career that I had. Yeah. So, But at the end of the day, I live behind the premise, I'm just going to get it done. Mm. You know, mm. there's no excuse. There are no buts. Mm -hmm. It is this is what needs to be done to, to make my dreams fulfilled. Yeah. So literally, I will go to work, work my 24-hour shifts, I will come mm. home, and I will work Body Envy. Mm. And whether it looked like it was printing out labels, mm -hmm. making, um, heat pressing my items as they came in, mm -hmm. shipping them out, whatever that looked like for the day, I wouldn't even shower. Mm. I wouldn't even have my, you know, I would come home, go straight to my office mm. in the house mm. and get to work for Body Envy. Mm. Yeah. Once that was done, then I could take a shower mm. and somewhat relax. Right. But, you know, I understood it, it's, it's a time to grind. Yeah. There's a grind period. And that's the period that I was in was that grind period. Yeah. Not knowing mm -hmm. that that grind was going to produce that seven figures. Mm. I had no idea. Because wow. let me tell you something. Ash, when I started Body Envy and working my 24-hour shifts, mm -hmm. and I was a battalion chief, mm. so I'm running an entire region mm. of DeKalb County. Wow. Body Envy was my little side business. Mm. That's what I called it. Mm -hmm. It literally was just like a hobby. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that hobby was gonna do what it did mm -hmm. and retire me 11 years early. Mm. So, but I was in grind mode. There was no excuses. I didn't even know what tired was. Mm. It was, I was acting like a robot. It had to be done. Yeah. I didn't have a team at that point. Mm -hmm. It was really just me, Jason, and my kids. Mm -hmm. And we were gonna make it work. Yeah. And that's what we did. No yeah. excuses. We going balls to the wall right now. And so where, where does that mindset come from though? Because that like, it takes a certain mind in order to like, you know, to, to, to get to that point. So we, like, where does that come from for you? For me, that came from the fire department yeah. because it's so structured to the paramilitary environment. Yeah. So just having to report to work at a certain time, yeah. handling emergency situations, it created the mindset that there's always people out here doing worse than you. Mm. There's really people out here struggling. Yeah. We have certain gifts and we take them for granted. Yeah. So listen, why not? Yeah. Why not? Now's the time. So. That's where the mindset came from. And even, you know, people who have a nine to five or have a career, utilize what you're being taught there mm -hmm. to implement that into your personal business. Mm -hmm. You have training and all. They're giving it to you. Mm -hmm. Take that training and implement it to form your business. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. So that discipline came from that. And then eventually I had to I had to develop the entrepreneurial mindset because that's totally different. Right, right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's totally, yeah. totally different. But the, the initial start of the mindset came from the discipline I had to have from 18 years working in a paramilitary environment. Yeah. And talk about that mindset for a second. Right. Because I think that um, because on the Internet, um, you know, there's a lot of people that make entrepreneurship look easy or a lot of times people are only looking at the parts of entrepreneurship that they want to see. But talk a little bit about that, like that difference between having a nine to five mindset or, or, or having a job mindset. And then now that entrepreneurship mindset, like what does that shift look like? Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually dealing with something right now mm. with being an entrepreneur. So entrepreneurship looks glamorous. It is what it is. You know, you're working for yourself. You see people traveling. You see them having all these extravagant things. And they're like, it's all because I work for myself. Yeah. But no one talks about the grunt work that goes on behind the scenes that people just don't see. Mm -hmm. And they don't talk about the slow seasons that roll around yeah. when money is not coming in the same way. What do you do? Yeah. You can't give up. Mm -hmm. It's never perfection. Mm -hmm. Every single day you have something that rolls out and it's like, how am I going to overcome this? Mm -hmm. Versus when you work for somebody else, it's kind of one of those things where they're kind of prepared for it. Mm -hmm. You have someone else that you could possibly lean on and say, hey, the computer shut down. Now what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you're working for yourself, you got to figure that mess out for yourself, right, right, you know, yeah. and you and you have to have, you know, a, a very, very strong mental because at the end of the day, sometimes that means you getting down to what looks like your last. Mm -hmm. But you can't give up and say, well, I'm gonna let my business go asunder because, you know, money's not coming in the same way or this person quit. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You have to figure out a way to keep things moving. Yeah. And so that's the difference. That's where the entrepreneurial mindset comes in is that there's there's no there's no alternative. Mm -hmm. It has to work or it has to work, yeah, period. Yeah, That's yeah. Neo, right, you know? Right, right. And, and, I, and I really, really, I really embody that. There yeah. is no plan B. Yeah. This is what it is. It has to work. Do what needs to be done so that it works and yeah. is successful. And that means that you have to be creative. Yeah. That means that you might have to, you know, you pop something out of thin air and make it, you know, you just got to be able to think on your toes. Yeah. And 
entrepreneurship, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. People don't understand it. They don't see that. They just see the glamour that's on social media. Yeah. Now, it's a lot right. that's involved, and it's all on you. Yeah. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, it's your, it's your business. Hey, how you guys doing? Hold on, hold on, don't press that button, because that's what I do every time I'm looking at an ad that I don't want to see. This ad just happened to be life-changing. I just happen to own one of the biggest home health care companies in the state of Georgia. I can help you create your own. Just to give you a little bit of insight, I send out registered nurses, LPNs, and CNAs to take care of people inside of the homes that cannot take care of themselves. But guess what? You don't have to have any medical background and you don't have to have any medical knowledge. So if you're wanting to change your life and you have a passion for actually taking care of people, then go ahead and sign up for Home Healthcare Blueprint. I'll see you guys later. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. And then so let, let's, let's, uh, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about marriage because... Um, Man, the, the the narrative, and that's why that's why I love you, you, you know, you and Jason's relationship because um, black love matters, right? Absolutely. Um, but there's this narrative around, man, you know, this is this is you know, strong black women, you know, can't find somebody, or you know, strong black men, you know, are intimidated by, you know, this whole narrative around black love not existing. Um, and I watch y'all. Y'all have fun together. Y'all big kids. I, that's like I, like y'all y'all big kids, and I love it, right? Um, but you know, Jason's an alpha, right? He's a he's a he's a man, man, right? He's an alpha. How do you deal with that? Like, how do you um, and but and, and but like watching you, you you also you know strong as well. Um, how do you deal with somebody who's as powerful as Jason is? And you still have your power, but but like you know, is it is it you know is, is that feminine male energy? Like, cause sometimes you know women have have masculine energy as well. And so, how do you you know how, how do you how do you deal with that? That's always been a struggle for me, mm. cause like you say, he's alpha, me too. Yes. Yeah. So like, literally, I remember I came home from work one day. He was like, "Listen." That blue shirt you got on at work, that comes off when you get in the garage. You don't run nothing around here. So literally, sometimes we would be like this because we're both so alpha, um, you know, and, and, and that's always been a struggle. And I remember one time he told me, he was like, you act like a dude. Mm, yeah. and, I, and, that, and when I heard him say that, I was like, I don't want to act like no dude, yeah, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, you know, because I, I can appreciate a man being a man yeah. and actually handling responsibilities as a man. So, you know, that's so I'm in work in progress when it comes to that, mm -hmm. honestly. But I believe I appreciate that. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> I am for real. And if I sat up here and lie, he probably would speak up like she's lying. <laughs> she's lying. Right. But I really have to I have to be really intentional with how I respond to him, yeah. um, how I conduct myself around him, because I do have that that harder personality where I'm like, you're not going to tell me what to do. Yeah. You know, although I know the things that he says are within my best interest, but yeah. sometimes it's just like, no. Right. I don't want to hear what you got to say. Yeah. You know, so I have to be real intentional with just listening to him yeah. and understanding where he's coming from yeah. and, and just being quiet. Yeah. Let me hear what you're saying. Let me shut up for a minute. Let yeah. me take it in. And then maybe I'll respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gotten better. Yeah. We're going on 20 years, Ash. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, January yeah. is 20 years married. So, yeah. And I'm still working on that. Yeah. And I'm not, and that's probably one of our toughest challenges within our marriage is mm. me being quiet mm. and letting him just totally take the lead with things. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then how, how do you deal with both of y'all being high profile though, right? So it's one thing if, you know, you're a battalion chief and, you know, he work at Walmart, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, cool. Yeah. The whole alpha thing is cool, right? Um, but like, you know, you're very high profile. He's very high profile. You know, how, how uh, do you maneuver that, you know, as a, as a couple? We embrace it, to be honest with you. Okay. We understand that there's power in that, mm. you know, and we understand that it, it definitely directly impacts our brands. Mm. And so we move as a unit, though. Yeah. So there's never anything that's put out publicly that we don't know about, mm. you know, and so we use it for what it is. Yeah. Um, and But at the end of the day, it doesn't define who we are as people. Yeah. So we, we, we're still very humble. Mm -hmm. You know, we still make sure that we, we reach back. We still are in contact with the people we've always been in contact with, that sort of thing. But when it comes to being high profile, we embrace it. It is yeah. what it is. We work hard to get to this Absolutely. level, you know, yeah. and so we use it for what we use it for, and that's for elevation of our brands yeah. and pretty much nothing more than that you know and and it's kind of embarrassing when you're out and people are like miss it two weeks out and I'm like <laughs> right. it's, it's Helani and it's just me <laughs> right, you know right, right, you don't right. have to do all that you know so right. sometimes it can be a little overwhelming even know your kids names yeah, you know yeah. and I'm like oh my gosh this world of social media it's yeah. just it's crazy but at the end of the day I understand that that 
celebrity, so to speak, has mm. driven us to where we are now, Absolutely. where we're able to reach people that we can't reach just in the city of Atlanta. Yeah. And so we're thankful for it yeah. and we use it for what we need to use it for. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then how, how we, like, what's the, what's the key to being a serial entrepreneur? Because, um, you know, when you think about, you know, it's not just the one business, it's multiple businesses. Um, and like, what, like, what is the strategy or what is the key to being successful as a serial entrepreneur? So um, this is something that I watched him do mm. because of course he started as an entrepreneur and I was sitting back like, I don't want any parts of that. Yeah. That's not my world. I don't want to be a part. I want, I want to know what my checks are going to be every right. other week, right. you know? Right. So what I find now is that don't put your hands in too many things at one time. Mm. Systems are so important. Mm. So once you get something rolling, it's scaling, not growing, mm. it's scaling because mm. we know there's a difference between the two. Yeah, please right. explain that difference for, the, for those who, who may not know the difference between growing and scaling. Yeah, so growth is when you're making more money and your expenses are staying the same. Mm -hmm. Scaling is your expenses stay the same. I'm sorry, your expenses are decreasing mm -hmm. and you're making more money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that gap, yeah. you're seeing that shift. Absolutely. You're going here yeah. versus here. Yeah. So what I've realized is that you have to kind of master one before you move on to the next. Mm -hmm. And you can have multiple businesses that feed into each other, mm -hmm. but at the same time, if, you're, if you start one, you don't have the proper systems in place, you're still needed to be a part of the everyday operations, and then you bring in all these other ones, mm -hmm. something is gonna fall short. Mm -hmm. yeah. So get it systematized. Systems mm -hmm. are so important within a business. Mm -hmm. get, your, get your personnel together, get your um, executive team together mm -hmm. so that Things are moving whether you're present or not. Mm. Then you can bring in something else. Mm. But, you know, jack of all trades but master of none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, everybody wants to say, I have all these businesses, all mm. these businesses, mm. but all, all those businesses thriving. Right, right, you know? Right. So master so you one. You have multiple streams of multiple ponds. Exactly, right, right, exactly. Right, right, Big right. difference. Yeah, yeah. So get one to where it's scaling. Yeah. Then you can work on something else. But all the simultaneous stuff and, and you got one that's doing well and all, all these over here are lacking, what's yeah. the purpose? Right. So yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I love that. And, and and just to recap, you know, it's like really focusing on that one thing. Make the main thing the main thing. Once you get the main thing to a level that you want it, you document the process, right? Because as you document the process, now you can get someone else to kind of do those things, and then now you can kind of shift the attention somewhere else. And I'm so happy you said that because yeah. that's something that we don't do, mm. particularly in our community. Yeah. You know, because we, we always feel like we're going to be around. Yeah. And then you see those businesses where they start, someone passes away, and then yeah. the business dies yeah. because they did not document the process. And when you say document the process, I mean to the finest yeah. detail. Yeah. That way they have the actual blueprint yeah. so that if, if, if you want to pass it on or if, God forget, forbid, you get sick yeah. and you just can't keep going, but your business can keep on doing what it's doing yeah. because you've documented everything. Yeah. That's so important. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that, I love that. And so right now, there's that person uh, who has the nine to five, uh, they want to become an entrepreneur. You know, they they almost like double dutching. They try. They got one foot in, one foot out. Uh, what advice would you give to them? Do it. Mm. Do it. Yeah. I I think I waited too long to do it, and I, and I I shouldn't say that. You have to do things in your own time, yeah. but don't think that you have time. Ooh. You know, mm -hmm. time is that little precious facet of life that once it's gone, it's gone. That's it. Yeah. That's, it's it. So yeah. it, you know, don't procrastinate. Yeah. If you have a vision, go for it. Yeah. Understand that it's not going to come easy. Yeah. You know, everything is not glitz and glamour, but go for it. If you don't try, you're never going to know. Mm. So don't sit back thinking that time is, is, is always going to be on your side mm -hmm. because it's not. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and take, and take the mistakes that you make mm. and learn from them. Yeah. We all going to make them take mistakes, learn from it. And just keep building, yeah. but you gotta actually put your foot out there and get going to know, is this for me? It might not be, but at least you can say you tried. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 you, and you mentioned mistakes, right? Um, a lot of people are um, afraid to, to make mistakes or afraid to fail. Um, what does failure mean to you? Failure is just my way of correcting things mm. that, there's no failure, put mm, it that way. Yeah, yeah. Failure is, it's not a negative term. Yeah. All it is is a way for me to have to go back to the drawing board, mm -hmm. punt that ball again. Yeah. That's all it is. It's, yeah. it's, it's lessons that you're learning, yeah. but it doesn't have to be fatal. Yeah. So you, you pick up where you need to pick up, make the adjustments, and keep moving. Yeah. But a lot of times they use, people use failure as a crippling. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. It's a lesson 
to keep winning. Mm. That's how I look at it. Yeah. It's not it's not a, a detrimental piece yeah. if you fail. Mm. Failure is just looked at as such a negative connotation, and it really isn't. Right. You know, right. nothing's perfect. Right. There's always going to be something that's going to take place. It's a challenge. Yep. Once you overcome it, you just put those little things in that toolbox, mm -hmm. and then when things happen, it's like, oh, I know what to do. Yeah. You know, I know how to handle this. I know how to fix it. Yeah. It's not negative. Yeah. And then, so, what, what what would you say to that person, right? Like, you know, uh, that has, you know, they have the will, they have the drive, um, they want to make it happen. But they might be with a partner that's not supportive. They might, you know, uh, have to, you know, be there for their kids more, and they don't really have that balance. They don't have that support system. You know, what, what, what should they do? And that's hard. Yeah. Because that's a lot of people. That's yeah. the majority of people. Yeah. But also, too, you know, it's it's a lot that goes with that. So why are their partners not supportive? Uh -huh. Is it because you start things uh -huh. and you don't see it through? Uh -huh. Is it because you're going to create a financial setback for your household that they know they can't pick up the slack on? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot of different factors when you're looking at that sort of thing. So it's hard to say, do this, mm -hmm. because all that backstory stuff yeah. matters. Yeah. You know, I have conversations with women all the time. It's my husband doesn't support this. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you do last time? Mm -hmm. Well, I started it, I spent all this money, and then, you know, it, the stuff just still sitting in my garage. Yeah. That's why he's not supporting mm -hmm. yeah, it, because yeah. you didn't follow through the first time. Yeah. So, you know, I guess my advice would be, if you're going to go for it and you have a partner that's not necessarily supportive, mm -hmm. you got to show them. Yeah. you got to show them that you're committed. Mm -hmm. You have to show them that you have the work ethic. Mm -hmm. You have to show them that you can still handle home yeah. and take care of this as well. Mm -hmm. So you have to find your balance. You have to find the way to be that everything for everybody, so to speak. Continue what your roles have been in the past and bring this piece in too. Mm. So it might not mean that you can d dedicate eight hours a day to what you're forming. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just two for you. Mm -hmm. But if, that, if your partner can see this is not gonna lack in order for you to bring this piece in, mm -hmm. A lot of times they circle back around. And it's like, okay, I can jump on his bag. I can be supportive and see that you're serious. And, and so, and so, and so, if I if I if I hear you correctly, it's uh, let's make sure or uh, give them something to believe in. Absolutely. Right. Not not just just not just the thought, not just the idea, but actually give Actions. them something to believe in. Yeah. They got to see it. Right. They have to see it, and right. I think that's always a fear. Yeah. When you're talking about being a woman. Yeah. And being a mother. Yeah. Being a wife. And then you're like, I want to I want to start this business. Yeah. Well, how are you going to start this business and have time to be my wife, mm -hmm. have time to take care of our children? Yeah. You know, if you're that person that cooks all the time, I still want my dinner when right. I come home. Right. You know, how are you going to still do these things and bring this in? Yeah. And so that's where it takes some soul searching to say, all right, let me write down what my obligations look like. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, this is what he expects. Mm -hmm. These are what my this is what my children expect. Right. Let me write down what these obligations look like and then figure out how to add my business to the puzzle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's doable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by all means. Right, right. But it takes planning. Right. People want to jump out there, jump off this ledge, and there's no planning that takes place beforehand. Mm -hmm. No, nah, you got to plan this thing out. Right, you right. already got responsibilities. Right. And then you bring in a whole business. Yeah. You got to plan. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, now, you know, multi, you know, million dollar businesses, um, you know, you're at where you are. Uh, if you could give 18-year-old Halani some advice, what are you telling her? Whew. I probably would have told her to believe in herself more. Mm. Believe and dream. Yeah. See, one thing about me, I'm such a realist. Mm -hmm. And so if I can't physically see it, to mm -hmm. me it's like it's unattainable. Yeah. It has to make sense for me. And I've always been like that. Like I never had this dream wedding I wanted. Mm -hmm. I never had this dream car. Mm -hmm. I was never a dreamer. Mm -hmm. Now I dream mm -hmm. because I understand that dreaming is manifesting. Mm, Those manifestations become realities. Absolutely. But you got to start there first. Yeah. And so I would tell 18-year-old Halani, you should have dreamt more. Mm. Yeah. You really should write more. Yeah. I love it. I love it. All right. Finish this sentence for me. I am. Powerful. Mmm. Love it. Love it. When it's all said and done, I will be. Successful. Mmm. Uh, anybody who crosses my path, I want them to know. They are enough. Mmm. I love that. I expand on that for me. Because I think that in, in the world of that we just live in now with social media and all, it makes people doubt themselves yeah. that they're not where they should be based off of what they see. Yeah. So it's a lot of comparisons that go on. And you got to understand that your time is your time. Yeah. And where you are, be happy with where you are. Be happy with your circumstances. Be happy with the positive things that are going on in your life. And be happy with knowing that 
you are somebody, yeah. you know, and, and not comparing and judging yourself based off of the things that you see. Yeah. You're worthy. Yeah. You're worth something. Yeah. You're enough. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I love that. And the reason why I wanted you to expound on that, because I, I, I do, you know, I agree 100 percent. I think that there are so many people uh, comparing uh, their chapter five to somebody's chapter 40 yeah. or chapter seven um, and not realizing that you just need to run your own race. Um, and somebody living their life does not add or take away from yours, right? And if you continue to run your life, you'll be you'll be fine. And so now that you're at this level of financial abundance, uh, dispel a money myth for us, right? Because there's a lot of money myths, and you know, like if you didn't come from a you know from a from a from a, from a trust fund, if you were a trust fund baby, uh, you know, we heard all of the you know money doesn't grow on trees. You got to work hard for money. Uh, scare money don't make money. So talk to us about a money myth that you probably heard growing up that now that you have this financial abundance, you're like, nah, that wasn't, that wasn't it. That credit is bad. Ooh, yeah, yeah. You don't want credit cards, Halani. You yeah. want to pay everything out of your, you want to pay everything cash. You yeah. don't want to owe anybody anything. Mm. Bull crap. Mm. There's a lot of positives that come with credit. You want to stay as liquid as possible, of yeah. course. Absolutely. And the points that you rack up yeah. when you utilize credit, yeah. you know, the, the, the cash rewards, all of that, it's extra, yeah. you know, and so this myth that we had credit is all bad and then, you know, you become an adult and you realize now you need credit yeah. and you need credit cards, mm -hmm. business credit cards and things of that nature to really fund and keep your business sustaining. Mm -hmm. It's a myth. Mm -hmm. All right. Love that. And so um, right now, right, um, there's a lot of uncertainty that's happening, right? So last year. Uh, there was a, a you know a, a, a lockdown pandemic. Um, a lot of people did well, but then a lot of people you know didn't know what to do, right? Um, and there's some uncertainty. And so right now, there's an entrepreneur um, who's ready, like they, they no fear, they're ready to make it happen. But because of the uncertainty, they're trying to figure out how to uh, make decisions during tough times. What you know, what advice would you have for that person? So. They're going to be tough times. They're going to come. You know they're going to come. You don't know when they're going to come. Mm. And so be poised. Mm. Panicking is not going to help solve the issue any faster. Yeah. So when you, when you come upon a, a, a hard time, just go back to the, the basics. Mm -hmm. You can always go back to the basics and find a solution. Mm -hmm. Write out what the problem is. Write out what the possible solutions look like. And, and be prepared to try out many things mm -hmm. until you figure it out. But the main thing is not quitting, mm -hmm. not panicking, mm -hmm. seeing your way through. There's mm -hmm. solutions to every problem out mm -hmm. here. There's mm -hmm. always a solution. Yeah. The, the, the thing is, how, how far do you want to go to find that solution? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And so just handle it with grace. Yeah. Don't panic. Yeah. Figure it out. Mm -hmm. It's all able yeah. to be solved. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know? But a lot of times you just go into a panic. It's like, oh my God. Like, I, let me tell you, I'll be real transparent with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, last year, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Every, most people did great. Right, you right, know, I right. hate to say that. You feel guilty saying it, but yeah. business was good for most people. Yeah. And then, like, for me, being a new entrepreneur, yeah. now I'm understanding the slow season mm -hmm. of retail, the things that people don't talk about. Right, yeah, and yeah. so I'm looking at things, and I'm like, hold on. This money ain't coming in the same <laughs> right, way it was right, right, last right. year yeah, this yeah, time, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so I just pick up the phone, mm. and I called my ads guy, and I'm like, Leon. Yeah. What's the slow season for retail? And he was—he started laughing at me. And yeah. I'm like, I don't know because yeah. last year was my first year in business. Mm -hmm. We're in a pandemic. Yeah. It's different now. The world is pretty much open again. Yeah. What's the slow season? He told me. And he said, well, most people do. June, it mm -hmm. slows down. Mm -hmm. Pick up at the beginning of the July because you got July 4 sales. Yeah. It slopes back off into the beginning of September, mm -hmm. Labor Day sales. Mm -hmm. And then you can expect a decline all the way to Black Friday. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, shoot, why didn't anybody tell me this right, before? Right. You know. Yeah, yeah. So long story short, it just made me have to revamp what I've been doing. Yeah. You can't spend as much money now as you did last year this time because things are different. Yeah. But just picking up that phone and saying, hey, explain to me how this works, mm -hmm. help to solve that problem. So yeah. he said, all you got to do is just scale back. Right. Just scale back what you're spending right now yeah. and gear up for Black Friday. Yeah. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Had I sat back and said, oh, my God, there's not as much money coming in. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? Yeah. You know, you go into a frenzy, you go into a panic. Everybody around you feels it. You know, mm -hmm. and they're like, hold on, the business is falling apart. Right, right. You know, but you just, you know, there's solutions to everything. Yeah. Tap into your network of people. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah, yeah. No, I love it. All right, let, let, let's switch a little bit, right? Because uh, we always like to know from our guests, like, that, you know, reach a level of financial abundance. 
Um, what is the most extravagant thing that you've done with money so far? All this ice I got on. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The jewelry. Okay. The jewelry. Okay. Um, okay. I love jewelry. Yeah. And I'm like, shoot, how much? Yeah. No problem. Yeah, yeah, Run yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in yeah, the back. Right. Yeah. Put it in the back. Right. So the jewelry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And and then and then on on the opposite side of that, what would you say uh, is the most impactful thing you've done with money? The Kroger give back we did last mm, year. Yeah, that was big. That yeah. was amazing. Yeah. That was amazing. And I went along literally to be supportive mm -hmm. and found myself standing up there like, let's go, <laughs> right. swipe my right. card yeah, too, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, and so that yeah. was just so fulfilling to know that you were, and to see the expression of the people, they were crying. Yeah, it literally sure. was, I didn't know how I was going to get groceries this yeah, month. I yeah. had $20 left. Wow. And to be able to say, get whatever you want. Yeah. And for those who may not know what the Kroger, Kroger give back was, what, what happened? So it was the circle of CEOs. And they all went to Kroger. The wives, of course, we came along. We went to Kroger on Wesley Chapel and just pulled up and took care of everybody's groceries who wow. were there. Yeah. And we were there, I think, about two hours. Wow. And we just took over the registers. Wow. You had um, Marcus. Um, Alex, they were actually working the registers, right, right. bagging the stuff, you know, yeah. and we were just using our personal funds yeah. to pay for the groceries of wow. the people who came. Wow. And we were there for a good over two hours wow. getting it done. Wow. And like I said, I want to be supportive yeah. and found myself moved by the spirit. <laughs> and I was like, I'm swiping my card right, too, right, you know, right, and it right. was just, it's amazing. Because to me, success is not measured by this material stuff. Absolutely. It's measured by what you can do to help others. Absolutely. And so to me, that really defined like, I've made it to yeah, a whole different absolutely. arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's always it's always a blessing to be able to be a blessing to others. So I love it. All right, so we're gonna do our speed round, right? Speed round, we take uh, you know, bank terms and then we flip them for us inside the vault. And so the first term we're gonna say is deposit slip. A deposit slip is a piece of paper, you you fill it out, you you know, put money inside the bank. For us inside the vault, a deposit slip is a uh, money slip up, a, a you know, money mistake. So what is the biggest deposit slip that Halani has made so far in her journey? Designer handbags. Mm. Lots of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just frivolous spending. Yeah. Saks. Yeah. Saks Fifth Avenue. Yeah. That's my deposit. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, second term, uh, charge off, right? A charge off, you borrow money uh, from a, you know, from a bank, you don't pay it back. They try to chase after you. After a while, they're like, I'm charging this off. I'm getting rid of this. For us here inside the vault, uh, what kind of people or mindsets did you have to charge off during your journey? Oh, the competitive mm, people. Yeah. The jealous people, mm. the envious people, the yeah. people that genuinely don't want to see you win. They yeah. want you to stay your old self Ooh. and you transitioning to this new butterfly, so to speak, they're not, they're not here for it Ooh, yeah. because you're kind of, you're surpassing them. Yeah. Although yeah. you're making every way for them to come along the journey with you, but because it's not them, Ooh. they have a problem with wow. it. Wow. Yeah. Charged Gotta off. Go. Gotta go. And, and how do you, that's a great one, but how do you, um, how do you deal or, or do you deal with um, survivor's remorse? Like that's that space where, you know, you 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 have those people. You making a way. You living this abundant life, but for whatever reasons, like you can't get them to go. Like, how do? Have you ever had survivors remorse? And if if so, how do you deal with that? My thing, yes. Yeah. Because you always want to bring the people you love along with Absolutely, you. You yeah. know, but you only can do so much, and yeah. I understand that. And yeah. and you know, it's like I'm gonna create a way for you, whether I give you a position, yeah. or I give you literally, you can work right alongside me. We can split this thing 50-50. Yeah. But you have to be willing to put the work in. Yeah. You got to be willing to execute. If that's not you, you got to go. Yeah. I only can do, you have to be willing to see the vision too. Mm. You got to put the work in. Yeah. I only can carry you so far. Yeah. You got to pick up your legs and start walking at some point. Yeah. You know, and so when you figure out that they're not trying to walk. Right, right. You gotta right, go. Right. And they're not trying to walk, but some of them even try to poke holes in the boat. Absolutely. Yeah, they yeah. wanted to sink, you yeah. know? And 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 that, that, that's easy. Yeah. It's easy to charge those off, right. you know, when you really see that they're they're being malicious. For it's sure. like, nah, we have no use for you. Yeah. But it is still hard because these are people who you've built connections with, yeah. friendships, bonds. They're like family. Some of them are family yeah, members. Yeah. And you know, you find that they really wish ill upon yeah, you yeah. just because of, of money right not understanding that listen when we win everybody wins absolutely, every absolutely. single person that's with us wins too yeah so yeah it can be very difficult but at the same time once it's identified yeah out of here yeah all right love it last but not least 
trust account, right? So the trust account is we take all your assets, your valuable assets, you put it in this trust account, you protect it, you help it grow. Um, who would you, who or what type of mindset would you say is in your trust account? The, what, what helps you grow? Mm. That's a good one. That's a really good one. I would think just fulfilling myself to keep growing personally. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like if you're filling yourself with educational things, you know, what entertains you, trains you. Mm. I didn't believe Ooh, that at that's first. that's a big bar. It's a big oh, that's a bar. Get, I need you to look, 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 look at the camera, say that one more time. What? <laughs> what educate, I can't even say it anymore. <laughs> what entertains you, trains you, y'all. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't understand that yeah. initially. So I used to watch a lot of reality TV. Like yeah. that was my thing. Open my eyes in the morning, I'm turning on the TV. I'm going to my DVR, I'm watching the Housewives. Right. You know, and that's what I was filling my mind up with. And I remember Jason told me one day, he was like, you know, when it's a you, train you. I'm like, boy, hush, yeah. garbage. I'm, I got a strong mind, yeah. you know, but then I understood like it really, really does. So yeah. now I want to listen to Les Brown. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to um, um, Sean Crocs in the morning take. I'm listening to that stuff every day. Yeah. And I understand that that's what's filling me up mentally to grow personally so that that trust fund mm -hmm. is well mm -hmm. Pat it, yeah, you know, and, and to me that transcends into business. When yeah. you're personally growing, that all reaps over into your business. No, I love it, love it. What, what's, 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 what's next for Mrs. Two Weeks Out? Mrs. Halani Labdell. <laughs> well, you know, I started a, I started Bosch University, which Ooh. is my mentorship. Nice. So I'm really excited about that. We, we, it's a four week program. We just wrapped up this past Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited because I'm giving people the tools that they need to be successful. Mm -hmm. The mistakes that I made, I'm like, let me help you not make these mistakes. Mm -hmm. I'm giving them access to my team of people that have helped me to get to where I am today. Nice. So I'm real excited about that. And just, just reaching back and just bringing some along with me. Yeah. So that's just really, really implementing that even more. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to write a second ebook. Hey. Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, on top of, I'm revamping some things with Body Envy. Mm -hmm. It's a lot going yes, on, yes. but it's it's tapping into what I already have yeah. and just making it better. No, I love it, yeah. love it. All right, y'all, the boss of the bosses. Mrs. Two Weeks out, Halani Lobdell. Uh, if, if people want to connect with you, they want to follow you, they want to tap in, where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram, Mrs. MRS, the number two weeks out on Facebook. I'm Halani Lobdell, and that's about it. All right, y'all. Another powerful episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash. We are closing out the vault. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. Follow me, Ash Cash, at I am Ash Cash. And I'm going to see y'all next time on the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Same time, same place, in God's will. All right, y'all. Peace. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You won't ask Cash. You can catch it right here in the vault.